Uh, yes. Yes, 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 sir. All right. Uh, as you all are not turning on your cameras, I'm going to do the same so that I can see on the chat as well. Is that okay? I would love to yes, see sir. thumbs ups and uh, I would yes, love to sir. see chat inputs. All right. Okay, so um, I hope you all had a good Diwali break and I'm, I'm sure you're working on your core curriculum along with uh, the startup idea that, you, that we've been working on. Uh, before we begin, I would want to actually do a survey with you all. Can you see the screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, and can you scan the code on the screen? Once you do, yes. yes, sir. I would want you to answer with one or two words. There are options of entering three words. What do you think is the most important thing in a pitch deck? You have to respond on the Mentimeter. Scan the code. If you are connected with your phone, you can actually use a, a browser. Click on Mentimeter.com and forward slash this code that you see on the screen. Good, we have 13 responses. There are six people who've responded, six unique responses. Can we all try to respond? We'll give it one more minute. Seven responses. Okay. I'll take a screenshot and we'll share it with you all in the group. So it's generally problem. I think that's at the core problem statement problem. That's at the core then solution. And I see a team. Market research. Idea clearance design. Attracting people, business model, product, market fit, beginning. Okay, I think all of you are right. Uh, but at the same time, let's see what should be the sequence of doing all of this. Uh, before we begin again, uh, I would love to know what are you all expecting from today's session? Again, one word answer uh, in the chat box will be appreciated. Or what do you expect to achieve by the end of this session? <coughs> Pitch orientation, okay. <coughs> Clarity on pitch, all right. Clarity and corrections in our pitch decks. Okay. What to include in the pitch? How to improve it? Design content of the pitch. All right. Brilliant. Standard pitch deck. All right. Thank you. So uh, I think you're all once again right. We will go through the flow of understanding what a pitch is. Why is it? important why do we create a pitch deck um, and it's very very important uh, to know how and who is looking at that pitch deck okay so that you can 
uh, created accordingly. One interesting fact that I wanted to share with you all is, um, according to uh, a couple of posts on LinkedIn, um, a VC will typically spend two to three minutes. It's kind of like a resume. Uh, if you're applying online to um, a venture capitalist or an investor, they will usually spend two to three minutes on the pitch deck. Uh, and it really depends on uh, uh, what is the size of your ticket and what the size of your problem is. Um, if you're lucky, you will get you know, 15, 20 minutes to pitch your pitch deck. It has to be very concise, very clear, and of course, curated to the specific set of people looking at it. So ye kuch, uh, you know, these are some fundamentals that you have to keep in mind. It has to be very sharp, very simple, not too many words. Uh, there are you know, 10 to 15 key elements to a pitch deck, and we'll go through all of them. But it has to be one slide maximum for each of that. And that slide should capture the essence of that uh, uh, particular topic. Okay. Any questions on this? Yes, no, maybe does. You can unmute and say. Okay. We will go through those elements. I think, uh, like I said, you know, here there are 10 to 15 elements. We'll go through those elements, understand them in detail, and then uh, we will look at um, a successful example of a decent pitch deck. Uh, and then we will also look at some uh, AI tools, which can, uh, uh, one is created by Squoia, uh, which is the biggest VC firm across the globe. And then other one is Prezi, which uh, I use for making presentation. We'll try to play with it. Uh, we'll try to give it prompt and uh, ask it to create like a template for us. And then of course we go in and we uh, add our content to it. All right. So we'll do all of that. Let's keep moving. Uh, again, these things uh, go without saying your cover slide uh, should be different, unique. It should make somebody uh, it's kind of like a book cover, you know, uh, either the title or the page or the image on the page or the name on the page should be so powerful that they want to open the book and read at least. Okay, so uh, make sure you spend some quality time and think out of the box when you are uh, creating the, uh, the cover page of your deck. Okay, could be a problem statement, could be an image which shows the problem or could be uh, something again, uh, nobody has seen. Uh, it, it doesn't have to be wild or crazy uh, uh, that can go counterproductive, but should be raising a curiosity uh, for somebody to go through uh, the deck. All right. Identify the name of your company. Again, uh, I think somebody last time when we were talking about this marketing uh, strategy, somebody uh, raised this point that having a great name uh, can go a long way, like Apple, Boat, uh, bolt and so on they have uh, chosen unique names so that uh, they can stand uh, stand out so as you see and i also shared this with you when i was presenting this uh, uh, marketing uh, uh, presentation strategy that every slide every uh, uh, page is an opportunity for you to share your organization's name logo and uh, some details. As you can see on all, on all my slides, there is a small logo and a small uh, email address to, uh, to the company that I represent or uh, my own sort of practice so that no slide is uh, uh, going unused. It's a very important real estate. It's a very important uh, set of eyeballs uh, which is going to look at your deck. Make sure that you're utilizing that, okay? Uh, like I said, you know, uh, just like the name logo is very important as well. Spend some time. There are you don't have to spend money right off the bat, but spend some time on designing something uh, which speaks uh, something about your organization, something about the work that you do. Uh, be a little more creative because again, the the startup ecosystem is very very tough. As you all know, there are only nine percent. I think eight to nine percent startups succeed in, uh, and this is a global stat not just Indian. And in India, there are around uh, 30,000 startups every year which get registered. Uh, and only 
a very small subset of those startups make it to five years or more. Uh, otherwise, they die out in the first two years. So you have to make sure that uh, whenever you're pitching it to um, an investor or an individual or a potential co-founder or potential team member, you uh, show that you've put in some time, effort and, and effort and energy in the name, in the logo, uh, and utilizing that and putting that on your uh, deck as well. It just goes to say that you are serious about it and you've, uh, you are um, uh, on top of solving a big problem. You are actually uh, making the organization a little more um, uh, creative to work with. Okay. Um, <clears throat> then I think a lot of you said, um, and it's it's absolutely correct. You have to define the problem very very clearly. Without defining the problem, you can't move on. I think uh, you have to clearly define in one page or one line or as few words as possible and as clearly as possible, what is the problem that you're trying to solve? What is the challenge that you're solving? What is the customer uh, problem that you're solving? And wh why uh, um, are you existing, essentially, to solve that problem? Okay, and like showing the theory of change, essentially. Uh, so when you are talking about the problem, keep the user or the customer at the center. Okay. Always keep the user or the customer at the center. S share a story on that customer's behalf. Meaning, uh, what would a customer go through in, in their regular life? Uh, what is that challenge that they face? And uh, why is it a big challenge? And why is it a challenge in the first place? So think, uh, think and keep the customer at the center and share a narrative either you could be the customer as well or you could uh, be uh, uh, the starting point of that problem as well you can share you know you faced a challenge you faced an issue you faced an experience <clears throat> for example if you hear uh, speechify's ceo's uh, statement he says that uh, i was uh, autistic growing up um, and I wanted to listen to uh, all the books I could not read. So to solve that problem for millions of people across the, uh, the world, I created Speechify, something of that sort. But keep this customer or the problem at the center of uh, your pitch deck. Okay. <clears throat> Please feel free to stop me in between and ask questions. Um, so another angle to defining a problem. So one is, of course, uh, you define a problem. Uh, you define how big the problem is. Uh, is it actually a problem or not? And uh, why is it still a problem? Meaning, why have people not solved it? Why are you the one who's going to solve it? Or why is this organization uh, going to solve it? Be it skill up, be it uh, FOCS, be it Krishi Argo. Uh, why is your entity uh, going to solve it? What is the limitation of the current uh, existing solutions? Okay. Why nobody is working on it but you? Or if people are working on it, what? why is it different? Why are you uh, getting in, engaged and how are you going to be different? Okay. That's the other dimension to the problem. Then this becomes your theory of change. So again, um, two sides of same coin uh, wherein you state the problem clearly and then you also state um, what your mission is what why do you exist team dragonfly are you going to say something you... oh sorry sir i just joined i okay you can either mute yourself or if you have any questions you can ask those questions okay sure sir all right. Uh, so the other side of the coin uh, is your existence. You know, why do you exist? Why do you uh, why do you do what you do uh, to solve that problem? Okay. Do share uh, about your team. I think uh, uh, I was doing some research while I was uh, creating this uh, presentation for you all, and one key stat which I came across was. Uh, a lot of successful uh, decks, uh, pitch decks, 
had a huge component of uh, uh, clearly defined team structure clearly defined uh, you know who are the team members what are their interests or passion or purpose what are their skills and what are their responsibilities is not nobody should be there for the sake of being there uh, everybody has uh, a certain set of role expertise and passion towards solving a problem within that entity itself so uh, spend some time on uh, uh, talking about the team as well it's it's going to be very important um, moving forward i i saw a bunch of pitch decks which did not mention team uh, as well but i think uh, it goes a long way again they are investing not just in the idea not just in the problem not just in the scope of the problem or scope of the business but they are investing in in you so at the end of the day it will be individuals uh, people who are passionate like you uh, a lot of people have not even joined the call they don't stay till the end of the call and those are the things which matter uh, that's why a founder is a founder right and uh, it's not just the idea so talk a little bit about the team or talk a little bit about you again keep it to one page uh, don't give them your story but uh, just give them some stats uh, showing them who is working on what and what is driving you all to do it okay any questions so far that's the first section awesome is it all clear is it all making sense Yes, yes so or it's nonsense yes, vishal is a nonsense you said yes to nonsense so just no kidding. sir i said yes just sir. kidding just kidding i know i know um okay. all right let's keep moving and then you come to a solution once you've talked about you know what the problem is what the scope of the problem is why is nobody else working on it uh why are you working on it uh, you know and who are you folks and what's your existence um then you come and talk about the solution like what's what's your approach what is your product service or the tangible solution or essentially uh theory of change uh, this can be also defined as theory of change which means uh if you do this then you solve for that uh if you uh create or use the service or if you uh, use this product you will solve for uh, xyz whatever your problem statement was okay uh, again keep it keep it very simple if you can't explain your problem in one line or sorry if you can't explain your solution in one or two lines uh, then you will have like you have bigger problems to solve because if it is too complicated for people to understand what the problem and solution is uh, they and the chances are they they're not going to be investing in you okay i'm sure you uh, you folks know all of this um show them the deep understanding of the actual problem uh maybe a first hand uh, reference to the challenges that you faced or the focus group discussions that you might have done i think we've spoken about this in the previous discussions as well so you have to make sure that uh, you are sharing the depth of uh, uh, problem and solution uh, to an extent and again finding ways to show it in a very concise clear uh, specific way which will also uh, be a test for you to uh, blend quality and quantity in your uh, definitions it it can't just be words it has to be some numbers it has to be some sort of uh, uh, facts uh moving forward as well okay i'm sorry can you still see my screen something happened no sir one second please i'm sorry uh <clears throat> Uh, how about now can you see the screen or no no sir how about now yes 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 sir all right okay so uh, again i, I think uh, just to strengthen and stand outside the crowd or stand apart uh, the the more details you can talk about the product and the uh, 
so the solution and the problem the better it is going to be uh, again keeping it very simple yet very powerful and uh, with quantities and quality okay uh what's your value add i think we'll talk about value add as well but i think uh, does it really work is there a proof of concept if there is a, a specific feature if there is a sort of um uh, sort of north star for your app service tool technology whatever it might be uh, highlight that when you're talking about the solution why is it different from whatever is existing in the market uh, what makes you unique could be cost but i think uh, again a lot of people play uh, with the cost but uh, and and that can go up and down so it has to be make sure it's it's something in the solution itself rather than just talking simply about a cheaper version of whatever uh, is out there um, because it, that it just increases the chances for you to uh, be a differentiator in the market okay um again then highlighting uh, that this, is this problem a perpetual problem or it's going to be solved for example if you are uh, uh, if you are sitting in 2024 and you want to create a a medical uh, a drug manufacturing company and your usps that you're trying to solve for polio even though polio uh, is uh, you know um, uh, is a disease which is uh, still existing in a, um, a few countries but um, the purpose of a drug manufacturing company or that what one particular drug is for you uh, for uh, somebody to solve it perpetually like once you've given the drug it should go away from uh, the uh, uh, the face of this world um, is that problem solvable uh, or is it big enough to for you to have a piece of the pie which is uh, uh, which means market for you to at least make tangible profits and then keep moving keep innovating and keep keep researching does that make sense so it's this is more uh, this is a perfect sort of uh, uh what's the word i'm forgetting the word it's it's a perfect uh, uh oxymoron for for that matter that you are in it to solve a problem you are existing to solve something for example at pratham for example i'll give you an example of uh, where i'm working right now pratham education foundation one of the biggest non profits in the country one of the oldest non profits in the country they're going to fi be finishing 30 years next year and uh, you know we uh, we keep asking our existential question that we wanted to provide good quality education to the last mile uh, uh, children every child in school in learning world was the mission when do we stop or cease to exist uh, this is that question and is there you know plenty of pivot in that market or in that segment for you to keep existing be it a product be it a service be it uh, uh, a medicine be it could be anything uh, but you're constantly striving to solve that problem and uh, remove that problem from the face of this earth at the same time existing and thriving as an entity as well so that's a perfect sort of oxymoron for uh, for you as a as a founder thinking about it will actually help you decide what kind of organization that you want to be uh, you should never be an organization which for example uh, i'll give you all a scenario uh, there is a doctor who is uh, very famous very popular and then uh, one day you visit that doctor and uh, you know uh, during diwali season and uh, this doctor is so sad that there is no pandemic happening the he's sitting and uh, saying that not a lot of people are uh, getting sick this year or this season so my business is low that, that that's one kind of doctor the other kind of doctor is uh, well um, uh, i'm going to be adding a few more things uh, i'm going to add few more services to my offering Uh, healthy lifestyle or healthy this because the um, the disease is going low or the amount of uh, people getting uh, disease is getting low so i will uh, try to pivot and find out more ways to help people and that is what the purpose is 
for me to be in medical field which kind of doctor would you prefer treating you or which kind of doctor would you like to work with can you can somebody answer the second one second one so the, is the question clear is the ethical dilemma uh, that you will be uh, you know uh, on again solving a problem for the sake of money or solving the problem for actually solving something and then finding more ways to help people okay so remember that and make sure that you are showing that and that uh, that can be again shown in the longevity potential as well okay all right the third kind of segment segment uh, section should be focused on why now why now why you uh, what is changed uh, about this problem is it a new recent issue um, that nobody has talked about it is it a issue which is created because of some other issue Uh, is the problem uh, long is existing and nobody was looking at the uh, solution or there is something else so answering this why now to uh, to understand what is your understanding of the market okay that's the first section uh, or like first part of the section the second part is what is the potential of the market what is the total addressable market aur ye humne last time bhi baat ki thi we'll come to this in a minute Uh, in the marketing uh, plan or strategy so when you look at marketing potential market potential you look at um the potential for you to make the money for example if you uh, talk about paytm or phone pay what is the potential revenue uh, paytm makes is it the amount of transactions they do online meaning let's say paytm did 1 lakh crore uh, movement from its platform is that the market potential or it is something else what what would be your answer sir it is something else because uh, this is a kind of platform where uh, they do advertisement also and collaborations also I and mean, on the basis of that they get some money and after that on each transaction they cut some part of the transaction and some percentage on large transactions and from there also they get revenue so what will be what will be the market potential for them just again uh, just give me a guesstimate you don't have to have a right answer but i want to think i want to see what your uh, structure or approach would be to this problem anybody can answer For the merchants, like they are not charging the customers who are paying, but they are charging the receiving end. Right. So the market potential would be, let's say, if they, uh, if their so ticket size, if they're charging point zero one percent of the transactions happening. so one way to look at the uh, market potential would be knowing and learning about past and future tr extrapolated trends of um, digital currency movement across india what was it in 2019 what was it in 2016 what is going to be in, what is going to be uh, what was it in 2023 and what is going to be in uh, the next 5 years so the amount of digital transactions or digital uh, currency uh, exchange can tell you and if you get the uh, the if their percentage or margin is around uh, 0.1% or 0.01% then that becomes the total addressable market again this is i'm thinking out loud you can go more deeper but um, uh, don't share numbers which are industry generic big numbers just for the sound of sounding big just for the sake of sounding big don't just put in any number there it has to be specific to your product 
specific to your service and what exactly are you charging for that product or service right so keep that in mind and uh, 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 just have that as a, a number and we'll we'll look at your presentations and your uh, sort of uh, pitches uh, in a couple of weeks as well um how do you justify the current timing like i said in this section uh, we'll talk about the uh, timings and uh, market potential why now is there a new tool like for example ai if there is a new technology or a piece of hardware uh, like a uh, solid state batteries or if there is something new which has come up or maybe you know the problem is new itself uh, you have to make sure that you are justifying why now uh, after you've justified why you okay uh, spend some time on explaining that some some spend some time on uh, making it reasonable and logical you can't just again uh, say it okay now it's the time why now is the time is the bigger question all right uh then again are we ready to uh, end the market are there any advantages that you have uh, 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 how novel is your solution what's again what's the total uh, capacity of that market okay are you've all i think done your business model canvases have you all Yes, no, maybe. Aap sabhi ne business model canvas kar liye? Yes, I want to see a yes from everyone. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay, three, two, five. Okay. So understanding, you know, who's your target? Uh, audience why and uh, you know what's the demographic dividend that you want to milk uh, uh, from your product or service okay what's the paying capacity and i think we did something similar for marketing strategy as well but having that in the pitch deck will also go a long way and then again uh, be specific to your service you can't just say for example if you are opening uh, i think one presentation was uh, around uh, opening uh, salon service or salon management uh, system right and then they were talking about the total market size of salon industry is that this the total address for market for them i uh, the answer is no the answer would be in in the details the devil is always in the details like what do you mean if the salon industry or uh, self care or uh, um self uh, beauty uh, industry is going to be 100 billion then what is your share or what is the share of this product in that whole industry and uh, that is then Uh, the tricky part to find and and they'll also again look at the logic you're still doing it very theoretically right now i think once you start uh, i think four five of you will be getting this grant and when you start building those products and services uh, you can then start seeing the reality of okay what's the margin what uh, you know what percent of this 100 billion dollars can you actually target if at all Uh, is it going to add or increase this hundred billion to two hundred billion by using your service, or it's going to be sharing a subset of this whole big uh, industry in itself? So again, understanding the market is good, but understanding your service and your category and your product in that market, in the context of that market, is even more uh, important. Okay. Okay, so got it. uh again you can uh, if if it is a unique product you will be creating uh, which is rare but if uh, for example uh, uber is a market creator uh, they actually identified a unique uh, sort of proposition and uh, they created a new category in the market urban club uh, uber uh, and then looking at uber there are multiple local players indian and uh, every country has their own player now uh, so 
you know you have to identify if it is going to be as big as uh, you know uh, something like uber which creates a new market or actually you know uh, redefining something in the market uh, again it depends on scale and the scope of uh, what you're trying to do uh, well, again it's 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 rare but these are the ones who have the potential of being a unicorn in the first few years um if you have any such ideas okay then the other section uh, focuses on uh, what's your competition who all is, are already there are you working against that so ubers is ubers competition drivers is uber competition uh, is ubers competition uh, taxi services uh, uh, or taxi uh, companies or uber's competition is uh, nobody because they were market creator uh, they just wanted to use underutilized vehicles because in us uh, if you uh, folks are uh, aware of this uber started by capturing idle vehicles uh, and creating a new economy for people who had some spare time and a, uh, a spare vehicle in us uk europe all private vehicles uh, are enrolled in uber most private vehicles are enrolled in uber so for uber when they started taxi services were not their competitors they just wanted to you know create a new economy and uh, leverage the uh, available uh, vehicles and people and manpower that they had in india they have done it differently because uh, the market was different the the strategy was different the the litigation was different and uh, uber was pushed and forced of course because of because it's a huge economy for uh, for indian to have indians to have uh, taxi services so they uh, the, there is a mandate from the government and uh, um, the unions in india for uber to use taxis so again uh, you have to really understand who are you up against uh, is it the actual uh, you know uh, product service provided by somebody local or is it something different from that okay and then what is your strategy around getting into the market i think you you all have worked on it but maybe on one page if you can summarize that uh a deck should not be more than uh, 15 to 20 slides it the you know um, great ones are i think 10 to 11 slides uh if you really have to have information then it should not be more than uh, 15 to 20 slides just make sure of that okay um we did this we did something similar uh, in the marketing strategy again these are overlapping uh but the more work you do in any part of uh, building your strategy be it marketing or uh, regular strategy the better chances you will have to have a very concise clear crisp uh, pitch deck and a crisp clear uh, conversation with the uh, uh, with the people okay strategy for success again this is a general overall strategy how you building your brand how you leveraging technology how you um, sort of uh, being customer centric and so on um, in a very uh, simple nutshell format we need to share that this is our approach how will you be building a team how will you building a product how will you be polishing the product how will you be entering the market and going beyond that okay then comes the i think the meat for vcs uh, if they love love your idea if they love your team if they love the problem statement they love the solution uh, then they will be talking about uh, business model uh, and financials essentially uh, uh, what's your budget for this year what's your budget for next year uh, what's your projected extrapolated uh, uh, numbers how much are you going to spend for marketing how much are you going to spend for r and d product development uh, customer retention or things of that sort i would recommend you having uh, of course an exhaustive uh, financial statement is uh, going to go a long way but at the same time for this purposes of a pitch deck it should be very simple 
uh, one slide which shares, uh, you know, all the the key numbers in terms of uh, any sources of revenue, any sources of expen uh, expenditure, um, uh, any capital expenditure versus uh, uh, operating expenditure versus your uh, uh, versus your revenues. Okay. Again, I think you uh, all know what the revenue generation is, what your uh, um, idea of uh, uh, sources of your revenue would be, along with your uh, um, spending patterns or spending plan rather than patterns, like how much are you going to burn, uh, if at all, if, uh, if you are. What will be the unit cost? What will be the overall uh, cost uh, at a business level, at a business plan level? I'm sure you know these terms. How do we make sure that we are growing sustainably? And uh, uh, VCs love profitable businesses. Uh, anybody does. Uh, but if you can be profitable right off the bat, nothing like it. That does not mean that you will do things frugally. Uh, I mean, you should do things frugally, but at the same time, uh, uh, while not compromising on the on the quality, while not compromising on the either the culture or the quality of uh, the organization. Um, yeah. How will you be measuring success? What's the success for your team? What's the success for your product? And what's the success for your service? Um, really understanding that will be uh, will be a key i think this directly links with the problem and solution and the theory of change wherein for example if you've said that you will be uh, spending uh, uh, x million dollars to save uh, x amount of hours and raise uh, a general industry wide uh, uh, increase in revenue for a lot of people i think uh, uh, highlighting those and then you know uh, making sure your team and yourself are tracking these as de deliverables moving forward uh, goes a long way not just profitability is is a number but uh, during the life of a customer journey what is the value add and uh, how have you uh, really delivered on uh, what you've committed in the problem statement I'll pause here for a minute and uh, take any questions. I know it's just too much information and of course we'll share this uh, presentation with you, but uh, I would love to hear what is coming up for uh, you folks right now. What do you think you already had and what do you think uh, is uh, new for you? Yes, Samba. Uh, hi, Sanjun. Am I audible? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Sanjun, right now the scenario is uh, like we have curated uh, 15 to 17 slides and mm -hmm. some of the topics you have mentioned are untouched. So we'll add those for sure. So how we can reduce the content and like you said, uh, bringing it down to 10 to 11 slides and not, you know, leaving behind any important topic as well. So like mm -hmm. if you could share some light on that. Can you repeat the question? I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, so I was saying like uh, we have now uh, curated uh, some slides like 16 to 17 in number. And mm -hmm. like you said, it should be between 10 to 11. Yeah. Uh, and there are uh, some topics are untouched as you have uh, said, like why now and some things like that. So like yeah. how we can reduce the content and not leaving behind important topics as well. If you could share any tips. Sure, sure. Uh, and we'll talk about those. Uh, I think once we look at uh, some of these ideas as well. Uh, yes. But I think uh, uh, one general recommendation, I mean, I saw this in uh, uh, some of your slides as well. Less uh, words 
or less paragraphs on your slides um, more uh, sort of uh, bullet points rather uh, you know more stories uh, in a story format on your slides will go a long way uh, and then when you are telling a story um, there is a sense of merging a few concepts in that one story uh, we will of course certainly talk about it and we'll uh, specify what all uh, uh, we can do for that uh, that particular idea or that particular topic um, but i think if you try to convert a few things into more synergetic story like format uh, it will help you reduce the number of pages which just states fact rather than uh, you know uh, rather it will bring everything uh, to a single sort of timeline of sorts from um, short thing short thing yeah any other question thank you for the question sambhav it was good question Okay, all right. We'll keep moving. Uh, once you've done that, again, I think uh, you're talking about your growth projections. Don't be over uh, enthusiastic or uh, over optimistic. Um, highlight two or three projections. You know, you can extrapolate two or three kinds of projections uh, when you're talking about next five years, four years, three years, for that matter. Uh, usually, uh, you know, business plans and strategies. uh are made for 3 years remember that you can't pr like predict the market for 5 years it's usually 3 years and then you uh you know change that in between you review it every year and then after the end of 3 years you rework on it and build um the next set uh, for 3 years because of how technology is changing because of how the world is changing uh it used to be 5 years earlier but now i think uh, everything is so dynamic the ai the the markets the wars the the political uh, geopolitical social sort of environment is changing so drastically that you can't predict anything so uh, build it for 3 years um and then uh, every quarterly is reviewed of course every year it's reviewed and then you keep working on it okay um again we talked about team uh, vision and next steps you bring back or close the loop here by uh, you know uh, sharing uh, what all you uh, been working on what key specific sort of things that you bring to the table uh, if there is a story again like i said you know if there is found a story like i said for uh, speechify bring that in uh, uh, what was the real problem that you faced which made you leave everything and just work work on this problem statement it should be moving enough for you to uh, move mountains if at all okay uh scratch the 5 years here i would say 3 years um make it for 3 years what are your product offerings projections and so on for 3 years okay and what would you do uh you know if you get that money i think uh, everybody wants to know especially uh, the uh, who's who the pitching deck is intended to they 99% cases you are pitching to get the money right uh, it'll be important for you to be honest and very uh, clear about uh, what the money is for what are the next steps what's the immediate sort of next step for getting this done okay if there are any uh, sort of recommendations i would say uh, don't put it on a deck but i think uh, put it on uh, the email that you're sending this deck with or you're starting your presentation uh, mention your disclaimers right off the bat it it should not be all a disclaimer but uh, uh, mention if there are any disclaimers that they should be keeping in mind before digging deeper in the uh, pitch uh, pitch session or pitch deck also have alternatives as well it's not just about money but if there are any other support that you would need from uh, uh, the investors 
uh, that then again goes a really, really long way. Okay. And then, yeah, we'll try this in a minute, but I'll pause here and uh, take questions before we jump into um, trying other things. Please, the, the more questions you ask, the better it's going to be. Hello, sir. Am I audible? Yes. Hi, sir. I'm Mohit from Team Dhal. Yeah. Sir, the uh, idea our starting se, to, it has shaped to something whole a different thing. And what uh, we execute karne ka soch rahe hai, our vision is to implement AR based navigation. Hmm. So, us cheese ko like hum apne vision ko investors ke saath mein present kar uh, kaise kar sakte hain like abhi se apne vision ko present kar sakte hain ya fir jo current hai, sa, solution hai hamara usi ke saath stick kare uh, so what's what's difference between your vision and your current solution okay so current solution jo hai wo aim kar raha hai pothole detection uh, speed uh, speed bump detection on high speed in sab cheezon ke liye aur hum hmm. slowly shift kar rahe hain ar based navigation ke saath so, hmm. air based navigation mein hi pothole detection or uh, speed bumps ke features add karne ke hmm. okay, so, so you you always yeah. sell a vision i think uh, uh, your current product is your current product right and it's yes. it's in the process of uh, getting uh, evolved you're doing r and d it's good that you have something uh, but you are you know pitching a solution uh, to a big problem so that becomes, you know, you're, you're pitching an idea, you're pitching a dream. Uh, essentially, you're trying to sell that dream to the investors as well. Now, keep that dream, of course, uh, to the vision level. And then, of course, when you're talking about your current, uh, like when you talk about that uh, dream, you, you share how far you've come. You share, uh, you know, what have you been up to for the last whatever years and so on. Um, uh, if there are any... Uh, you know, discussions that you did, any prototypes you made, um, not showing them everything, but also sharing that, like, you know, after 10 iterations, we are here, we are. So you have to show them the present as well, of course. If the present is just an idea, then again, it's just an idea. But if the present has something, then you, you know, uh, uh, share what, how far you've come, because that's an achievement for you. Okay. So Yash, I'll answer your point. There are multiple uh, uh, acceleration programs or uh, idea programs. If you search all the VC firms across the world, they have a flagship annual program for getting entries with new ideas. Everybody's looking for great ideas. Everybody's looking to make money, right? So the best way to approach VCs, if you have a great idea, is to find out what is their flagship program for incubators, accelerators, and so on. They will then, you know, uh, look at your idea, whatever stage is it. Uh, you apply and you go through the process, you go through the interview process, and then you join their incubation program. And that incubation program sometimes comes with money, Sometimes it comes with money and a team. Sometimes it comes with money and team and uh, strategic direction. Uh, so that's how big uh, sort of uh, folks at IIMs and uh, IITs and um, you know other folks they they collab they create teams and they start applying. Uh, I have seen personally a lot of people uh, who are starting their startups. Uh, they apply to a lot of grants, fellowships. Um, and uh, you know it depends on what industry you're in if it is education it's a different set of funders uh, angel investors venture capitalists if it is a different industry there, there are different sort of programs running um, so yeah i mean i think it really depends on uh, the research the best way to go is to go through programs rather than individuals because these are group of people who are always working there's no uh, you there's no point talking to individuals at individuals level even though uh, somebody would be uh, like a leader of at a VC firm. They'll not entertain you individually. They would rather want you to come through uh, like a process. So, for, for example, I I know uh, Chintan uh, who's uh, leading um, the Atal Innovation Mission. Uh, 
the ai sorry the uh, the startup uh, uh, ecosystem in india he was brought in by uh, uh, the pm modi to as a lateral entry um, to india to run this he sits in niti ayog so they have a program uh, niti ayog and this startup india uh, they also have this program wherein they uh, allow people to send in their entries their ideas and they again go through the pitching session and so on so everybody is doing doing the same thing <laughs> other questions Yeah, please go ahead. Yes. it's very important to have uh, facts on your presentation don't go in with uh... you have to share the facts i mean uh, not just for pitches but in general aap kabhi bhi koi bhi baat kare bina reference ke mat kijiye it just gives you uh, less credibility in the long run always have uh, factual numbers and if you if it is an opinion then say it out loud that's in my opinion uh, so please call out all the facts it's really critical don't just put in numbers for the sake of putting numbers if you're putting numbers then refer where these numbers are coming from if it is a focus group or if it is an opinion for you okay any other questions folks i mean I, i would request you to please ask questions because the more you ask the better uh, you know uh, it's going to be no questions okay now let's jump into uh the next section which is let's try it ourselves and before we do that let's look at a successful uh, pitch uh, remy i think i've chosen remy because uh, i like the problem statement with them can you all still see the screen yes no maybe Yes, sir. yes, sir. So yes, this sir. is, I think, uh, uh, this is a successful pitch deck. They were raising one point five million dollars. I think it was a seed round. Um, they had a brilliant idea. I kind of like the idea. I have not seen the presentation, but let's see what they uh, have come up with. Okay. Uh, so again, I think uh, very prominently sharing the name, the logo. Uh, it's very simple, very straightforward. uh and uh, a very simple concise uh, problem statement creating the leading culture building platform for remote teams very simple culture building pl platform for remote teams <laughs> okay problem the world has changed remote work remote work is here to stay 68 million people will be working remotely 3 plus days a week by 2025 in us and europe alone okay and they have added the stat as well if you see 25% of enterprises expecting more than half of their organizations workforce predominantly working from home post covid very clear very sharp uh, problem statements yes it is a problem uh, it's a, it's a situation it's an opportunity let's see what uh, we do with it um now this is 
another way of showing the fact it's not a stat that they got online it's not a big number they did a 100 plus interview and 80% of people when we work remotely it's difficult to build and maintain social connections with my team that's the problem statement right okay based on 100 plus interviews with the remote workers from october to december 2020 it's still uh, you know a little bit old because i think they were pitching this in 2021 or, or something okay very clear very simply in as less words as possible ye problem hai hamari and it is here to stay because a lot of people are going uh, online okay now with this problem what is what further problem uh, gets created so if they are not building if people are going online then uh, there are three times more sick days there is two times more turnover meaning people leaving the organization um so they've shown the problem and then now they've shown the opportunity as well by working remotely you can actually increase the productivity and uh, you know uh, by working remotely you can save a lot of money as well so it's an opportunity as well while it you know uh, share some challenges uh, in the process very clearly shown the market the potential the current situation the challenge what is uh, an opportunity in all of this as well okay we are down four slides so we have clarified uh, a very very clear problem and uh, the problem is here to stay okay uh, further building on uh, what were the 100 plus people the focus group discussion doing uh, facilitation of connection is time intensive requires huge mental investment high pressure on team to lead create team atmosphere develop relationships well ensure what's effective different time zones zoom fatigue make it constantly hard to find ways to connect okay why are we here प्रॉब्लम समझ लिया हमने उसके रूट भी समझ लिए उसका स्कोप भी समझ लिया आर मिशन इज टू मेक रिमोट वर्क मोर ह्यूमन एंड कनेक्टेड वी वांट पीपल टू बी मोर कनेक्टेड वाइल देर वर्किंग रिमोटली ओके हाउ डू दे डू दैट रेमी इज अ कल्चर बिल्डिंग प्लेटफॉर्म दैट हेल्प्स रिमोट टीम स्टे कनेक्टेड एंड बिल्ड कल्चर रेमी हेल्प्स यू क्यूरेट facilitate optimize the right interactions for your team so daily check in calls again it all happens virtually but the intent or the idea changes get to know your team weekly on tuesdays learning of the week weekly on friday just creating online engagement activities <clears throat> for the team very simple one page as less words as possible so they use rituals to build culture like a muscle again they are quoting howard study from 2013 rituals in workplace can strengthen the organization's desired behavior by creating focus and sense of belonging and making changes stick so their usp or their solution is uh, more psychological um, it's of course leveraging technology they're not built a system or a software they're not the competitor is not zoom their competitor is nobody rather they just want to solve a challenge which got created due to the pandemic and uh, the culture of uh, working um, in the modern times okay <clears throat> through asynchronous rituals we help remote teams to proactively build and measure culture so how do they connect how do they create and share and how do they create and measure culture over time <clears throat> more about the product now this is the original question about uh, vision okay um, where do they want to go how do they uh, want to <laughs> change the working culture of uh, online working organizations to change the way culture is built 
lived, practiced, and enabled all past participants to co-create it together. Everybody gets engaged, and uh, a culture comes from beliefs, values, and assumptions to behaviors and matrices. It impacts the behaviors and matrices as well. Again, citing a source, which is good. I think I'll also uh, I also feel that they have missed an opportunity of showing their logo in, in every slide. I would recommend you do that. Uh, they did not do it, and that's okay uh, because they've kept it very simple. Now, total addressable market is uh, it's a six point five billion market of which we will capture hundred million within four years. So they've um, you know uh, identified how they've so they've highlighted the assumption as well. Um, 6.5 billion total available market, total addressable market US and EU is 140 million people in jobs that can largely be done by home. 60% of free users on their app, 20% standard, 15% premium. Uh, out of the 6.5 million, service able is 3.5. 68 million people working remotely more than three days. That's what they're targeting right now. And serviceable market is 3% of this whole thing. Okay. We have a great early traction and positive feedback from remote and hybrid teams. Uh, qualitative test demands, again, they are referring to the focus group of 100 people that they've uh, worked with. Uh, they have had 250 signups, again, showing your current stat. Where have you come so far? And how long? And this is this goes to that point which we were making earlier. Product ka vision ek hai, but where are we right now? And what is the feedback that we received? Uh, if you don't have that right now, that's okay. But the more you do your due diligence from behind the scenes, of course, the more chances are that you'll make money. Okay. Next milestones they've highlighted in the same slide. Okay. They, they, they want to build an MVP, no code uh, tools. Hire technical co-founder, test iteration four to six weeks, build version one. So they've shown how far they've come and where they're heading. Very clear four or five tangible uh, line items. They talk about the team. We are a team of strong organizations, psychology, product and brand and sales expertise. So show it like this. What are you going to be doing? Uh, who are you? What your experience is? And so on. And we've teamed up with best in class culture remote experts. So these are mentors. It's always good to share your mentors as well. Uh, for example, I think NASCOM has uh, provided you this mentorship, my mentorship, and then there are other mentors that you are working with. Uh, you can actually use and leverage some of their experience, some of mine, and some of other people's experiences as well, because you're not alone in this journey. And it goes to show how serious you are and how, um, how much uh, effort and energy you put in to get people outside your classroom or outside your group of people who are working closely to help you uh, gu and guide you. So I don't know if any one of you has a, a board set up, but uh, this goes to show that, you know, you can add a board uh, advisory and sounding board uh, as well for uh, you all to work. Get in touch. They have not talked about money because I'm sure uh, it's available on this public forum. So they've not shared uh, anything publicly, but I kind of kind of liked uh, their presentation. I can share this link with you all. I'll, let me share three links quickly with you all. That is one. This pitch. That is two. Sorry. And these two links are part of that. Okay, I'll pause here. I'll stop my screen right now. I will try to turn on my camera and try to speak with you now. Okay, so questions, folks. <laughs> I know you've we've uh, heard a lot of information. We've gone through a lot of content. We will do some practice and then uh, uh, sort of we can 
wrap uh, today's session, but uh, without questions, I feel uh, we'll not be able to make the most of the time that we are spending together. So what's going on? Tell them. Uh, it has to be balanced. It has to be very. Uh, so I'm responding to Shivansh question, which is, uh, is it better to lay major focus on problem or is it better to keep the balanced view of all? Um, there are like t key 10 components, like I said, you know, the, the problem, the solution, the team, um, the, your business plan, total addressable market and so on. You saw, saw that uh, in the presentation. Uh, Keep a balanced approach in all of them. I mean, uh, uh, if you're spending too much time on explaining the problem, then you're doing it wrong. I think it has to be very, again, they have three to five minutes to go through your whole deck. Every sli slide should be very straightforward, very simple. Uh, and if if you're spending, let's say, more than two slides or three slides for explaining a problem, then probably you're not doing it right. In the same way, two to three slides for your solution Otherwise, you're not doing it well. Uh, rest, everything should be one one slide maximum. Okay. Who else? Did I share with you all who's what's the difference between an uh, human beings and animals? What's the difference between human beings and animals? In San or Janwar me kya fark hota hai? Main bata chuka hu ye do teen baar. Ability to ask questions. So why are we not asking questions? Why are we all humans here? Yes, sir. The more questions you ask, the better it is. Please keep asking questions as human beings. All right, I'll take uh, Yash's question. Uh, sir, if our platform is providing multiple features like our idea, we are providing mentorship, even details, uh, and building community for students, how to wrap it? It has to be. Uh, so you're talking about your product and services. Make sure that you are. Uh, so let I'll give you a different example to uh, answer this. Let's say if you have a clothing uh, um, product company and uh, you have uh, 10 different uh, kinds of uh, products uh, in your store, uh, it's not recommended to share all 10, but what's your highest selling? What's your most selling product or top 80% selling products? Same way, uh, if you have a feature set in, a, in an app, then uh, don't talk about everything. I mean, if they don't have time for everything, uh, you can mention it uh, somewhere, uh, you know, in the appendix. But when you're talking about the app, talk about the key features uh, or, you know, uh, features which somebody is going to spend 80% of their time in. Uh, and that's why product companies like Microsoft, they talk about Windows separately. They talk about Teams separately. They, co they talk about Office 365 separately. They talk about Calendar separately uh, because they can't talk about everything at, at, at the same time. So you have to be uh, cognizant on what do you choose to share based on the problem you've uh, expressed. And you can't solve everything. So if you're, like I said, if you're spending more than two to three slides for your problem, then you're doing it wrong or maybe you're just Boiling the ocean. You can't boil the ocean as a startup. Okay, Yash. We'll look at your deck and we'll give you specific feedbacks if needed. Okay, tell me how many people are connected uh, using their phones. Can you raise your hands? Or maybe type it on the chat bot. Oh, sorry, chat box. One, two. Two people connected from their phones. 
are you all connected with us or you're just connected with us how about others are you connected are you all uh, connected by laptop who all are connected by laptop you can uh, uh, people with phones can keep their uh, hands down four five six seven perfect all right uh, let's open a link i will share a link here i'll share two links copy and <coughs> excuse me One is Prezi.com and the other one is StoryDoc.com. I'll, I'll type it. Now, um, I would request you to go to these websites right now and I would request one of you or maybe let me share my screen. Let me turn off my camera and share my screen one second so that we can all do it together. Uh, but again, I recommend you all to do it with me window you can see the screen right can you all see the screen yes sir yes sir. all right brilliant brilliant come on okay all right let's go to storydoc.com it's already open for me, but I'll open it here. Story.doc.com. Now, this is uh, Skoya's, uh, you know, uh, AI pitch deck uh, creator. And you go there, you en uh, enroll for free. Let's say you talk about pitch tech. What kind of pitch tech is it? It'll ask you that product startup investor. Okay, investor pitch tech. Now you have to write a, a prompt for the AI to create a pitch tech. Um, if anybody has a prompt with them ready for the idea, the problem that they're trying to solve, can you type it in the chat box so that I can type it here? And let's see what it creates so we can co-create it together. A brief, it can be as uh, long as possible, as short as possible, but it should have the crux of the problem and uh, uh, Oh, what is this idea? Let's see, let's see. I'll just type it here, okay? I'll just paste it here. We'll see. All right, next step. <coughs> what should be this about? It should cover the problem, statement, solution. Total addressable market. Um, strategy and our business plan along with financial statements for our investors okay pick a style what works uh, which one do you want to choose yeah yes third one this one all right 
I'll choose the color for you, this one. Again, this, this will give you like a very high level uh, template, uh, if not the whole thing, because you'll have to create and uh, build your own thing. Oh, now it's asking me to create one. Okay. Let's see. It's amazing what these new tools can do. Let's say if we go for preview, it'll show you how will it look, okay? Our vision, problem statement, the solution, problem highlights. So basically, I think uh, the, the essence, it's just trying to create a, um, a ready-made presentation for you, but this, the whole content, the research behind the content, the references, everything will come from you. This can be good for, uh, you know, just again, creating an automated uh, PPT, but it's it's up to you to put in all this data and all this information. It's just, just a fancy form of PPT, but the content, the structure remains with you. You can do something similar with Prezi as well. So if, uh, let's just quickly see Prezi, how does that, how, how does Prezi work? Um, you can actually go in and create a new presentation, create with AI, it'll ask you a couple of prompts, give you, um, a couple of, uh, you know, templates to choose from. Um, and then, you know, it'll ask you as much detail as you uh, can share for your idea. There's the same idea. You can upload a PDF as well. If, if there's more, the more description, the more prompts you give. <laughs> and this is why I was saying, you know, questioning is very important because now it's all about uh, prompting the AI as well. The more uh, interesting questions and uh, prompts you'll give to the AI, the better uh, results you'll get, you'll see. So you can choose a template. And then go through it. Okay. So that's how it works. Um, Prezi is fairly straightforward and easy. Uh, I would recommend doing story doc or maybe doing it uh, in a PPT first so that you have a sense of how it will look in a PDF format. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think uh, it really depends on the template, the coloring, whatever uh, you, you choose, but the idea remains the same. The flow almost remains the same. Um, and uh, uh, you can actually play with multiple different versions of it, but uh, have it for different set of audience as well. So like uh, when you're looking at storyboard, it was asking you to uh, choose what kind of pitch deck is it? Is it just that you want to talk about the product? Is it just that you want to talk about uh, the problem solution? Is it a financial uh, uh, pitch deck or a, um, or any kind of other uh, pitch deck as well. So uh, I'll pause here again. I'll, I would love to take questions. I would love to see um, if there are any thoughts that you would want to share with me. Any folks, give me a minute. I'll turn on the light. One second. I'm listening. No questions? Seems everybody knows everything. Sir, so is, uh, is there any slide uh, slide limitation? Like the, in some AI tools, there are limitations of about 10 slides. No, no, there are no slide limitation for these both, both these uh, apps. Uh, there's a limitation for you. Don't go beyond 15. 
Yeah. Okay. Uh, if we do not have any questions, we can uh, hold on. There is a question in the chat box. If there are other teams with same idea or same essence of idea, how to tackle this in the presentation? Oh, write their name in the competitor's name and tell how your product is better than them. There should be some healthy competition as well, right? Okay, final call for for uh, more questions. No, I didn't get the question, the, the second part of this question. If the other team is way forward, how to tackle that? Well, that's life. I mean, some people are way forward than you and uh, you are where you are. You can't stop. You can't stop working on uh, uh, the idea or the product. Um, just state it the, as a reality wherever you are. Just say that you how you're better, how the idea is better, how the solution is better. You can't help. Uh, uh, let's say if I talk about uh, Tony Robbins, I, I can't compete with Tony Robbins. He is where he is. I am where I am. Uh, I can aspire and uh, uh, maybe bypass him uh, some point in my life, but uh, that should not stop me to pitch my idea to people. It does not matter where, where anybody is. Uh, you focus on what you want to do, how you're different, how you're better. Why is this a problem that you're passionate about? And uh, why are you the right person to solve that problem? Doesn't matter. Orkut came before, uh, you know, uh, Facebook, um, and Google Plus was also a competitor with with Facebook, and now Instagram uh, is better than uh, Facebook in so many ways. Um, so it it really depends. So, so don't worry about that. Don't worry about who's ahead of you and who's not. All right. John, we should be close this uh, call then. Um, and uh, let me know when can we schedule the next, uh, the the pitch deck presentation from the teams. Sure, sure. Yeah, uh, I'll let you know when we have that and uh, let's close it up. Okay, all right. Thank you everybody for being here. I really appreciate your time. I would appreciate more if you folks can ask questions. Uh, feel free to reach out wherever you want. Okay. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, man. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, folks. Take care. Bye bye.